Do you need permission to travel on roads paid with your tax paying money? Do you need permission from anybody to walk or to travel or to transport your own person or property on this earth? My friends, we have a very exciting show today because you guys might have seen the viral video out of Colorado. This gentleman here um, had a great encounter with the police, very respectful, very knowledgeable. And at the end of this encounter, the police actually asked him for information about what he was talking about. Very powerful show. Hey, everyone, welcome to the Freedom Lovers Show. I'm your host, David James Rodriguez, and we're building a voluntary world, well relationship at a time. And we have a guest named Paul on tonight, uh, today, this morning, wherever you're watching this, a very important thing. Many of you guys know that I'm also practicing the right to travel. Um, haven't had plates on my car for a few years, but this year had some uh, trouble and uh, got some court cases. But you got to watch this video. We'll put it in the link. And so before we get into the questions, uh, Paul, I want to welcome you to the show and thank you for being a courageous man on the land. Thank you, David. I appreciate you having me here. Can you still hear me? Yes, beautiful. Absolutely hear you. And I think the, the audience can hear you as well. And I want to ask you first, we'll get into some of the other details, um, so many important questions to ask. But I want to ask you, was that the first time you've done that? Because it doesn't look like it. it looks like you've been doing it for a while. I'm curious. Um, how many times have you done that and how often is the outcome as positive and um, successful as that encounter that we saw last week? Okay, so just to give everybody their, you know, uh, fix of the fear, because I know people are going to tell me, well, he's only done it once. That was the first interaction that I've had <clears throat> with the police regarding moving my property from point A to point B. So yes, I've had interactions in the past with police, but not anything regarding the uh, you know right to travel or really you know what I'm going by going forward is moving my property from point A to point B. I want to dumb it down as much as possible so that they can't play with the words. Mm, yes, well that's amazing, man. Because um, I'm cutting my teeth over here. I mentioned I've had my car towed and I've been kidnapped a couple times. <laughs> And I think you did a great job being nice and respectful. And so that, so you're one for one, that's phenomenal. A thousand percentage batting average is great. And also I had a question about the paperwork. Um, could you share with the audience, what is the paperwork? Cause you went back and forth and we can talk about the common law stuff here, the next question, but what is the paperwork that you uh, provided to the officers there? So really that was just literally, you know, there was three papers, I believe, might have even only been two, um, kind of like one line on each, which was the definition of a motor vehicle from Black's Law and the definition of a driver from Black's Law. And as I'm sure you know, and a lot of other people know that, and then we can get off onto how going forward, I probably won't even bring that up because I don't want to bind myself to anything that they put out there. Even the highest federal court in the land is beneath the common interactions of the peoples and the understanding of the people, you know, what I understand as common law. But yeah, it was just the uh, definition of driver, definition of motor vehicle, and a Supreme Court ruling, which really is just a precedent, doesn't really mean much, but it can kind of tell them that, hey, we live in a reality where other people of high accreditation have decided that the people have a right to move their property from point A to point B without being regulated. Mm -hmm. Right. And Unless you know you're doing commerce, right, Dave? Mm, correct. Yes. Commerce. Yeah. This is the commercial, the commercial definition of driver. You said um, is a, well, we're travelers on the road. We're not drivers transporting cargo or persons for profit. We're just transporting our own person, our own property for our own private matter. <laughs> And um, did the Supreme Court case you quote, was it the Kent versus Dulles or something else or? You know what? I gave so little attention and thought to it because ultimately I believe that, like I told the officer, this is about the conviction in our heart. Yes, you have to know what words you're going to speak and stand on them, but that's just, you know, that's somebody else's decision. It's somebody else's meanings. I mean, we can hold to them to hold them to it, but we're even beyond that. You know, I mean, again, where in the universe, other than inside of our head, because we've been taught this, does a man or woman have the ability or right to tell any other man or woman what to do with okay. their property? 
You know, we can get into private property and traveling. I'm moving my property from point A to pay, point B. Who derives the authority to tell me that I can't or that I have to pay them to do such? You know, yeah. they can't show it because it's not there, which is why he kept asking me, you know, what about your title? What about the legal name? Then he started talking in circles. The legal name, which is not your name that the government gives, which isn't yours. He's aware and they're starting to become aware if they haven't always been aware that, that there's a the duality going on. I agree, man. I've had uh, one of my encounters. I parked my car. I was pulled over for speeding. I got out and I started asking the officer, uh, sir, I'm going to need three forms of identification. And I locked my car <laughs> and he didn't know what to do. And so long story short, they ended up arresting me. Or they, they kidnapped me and stole my car, towed it. And then they took me to the county jail. And then they didn't admit me because they weren't admitting that particular charge which it was a loop, super low level charge so they let me go with no charges but the point was that video went kind of viral too and i got pulled over later and there was another officer chp officer who says hey i'm still i'm still um researching if i need three forms of identification right so there is this awakening happening with the law enforcers and this would be my message for those guys out there officers you guys aren't the bad guys the, the politicians are pimping you and they're pimping us playing us and we've all been deceived. So it's great to see Paul standing on, sounds like you're standing on sovereign rights or unalienable, unalienable, um, alienable rights. So I wanna ask you, Paul, what inspired you to do this? Like, what is it, that, did you, by the way, did you take your plates off the car? You did say you covered your VIN number. Um, maybe tell some of the people- There's who no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but there is no plates on the car. I'm not operating under a license. I do not possess a license, never have, never will. Um, <clears throat> again, there's no need to license the lawful activity. You can only license lawful activities, right? You can't give a license to somebody to kill someone else because it's unlawful. So okay. You can only license lawful activities, which ironically we have a birthright to do because they cause no loss, injury, or harm. Okay. So the idea of getting a license is literally giving up your birthright your natural rights for benefits and privileges supplied to you by a government. Mm -hmm. And again, you can even have both. You retain the ability and the right to move and to change. You know, you are not a statue, like they try to say statutes with a T, but you are not a static individual. You are a moving, changeable individual who is constantly learning and growing. And so you always have the ability to say, hey, right there, I'm operating under commerce. I'm hauling goods. I'm doing Uber. Cool. All your stuff applies. I got to go 55. I got to have a license. All that's cool. When I'm, when I, as you say, traveling, and as I said to him, but as I'm moving forward, I will even get more simpler because they will try to play word games. I'm moving property from point A to point B. Try to wiggle around that, you know, because we all know what move means. We all know what property, you know, so... The bottom line is um, we have to understand that our common reality is not the reality they're operating in. It's essentially a matrix. There's two realities and you can step into one to do business sometimes, and then you can step out of it to live and be the man or the woman, you know, as he, as he tried to put it, the living man. But I don't even want to diminish the title of man or woman. I don't need to say living man or woman. I mean, I'm clearly not dead. Mm -hmm. Right. No, that's a great point. I could tell you did a lot of research because this is some of the stuff that we're starting to realize um, as it regards to COVID and all these are shutting down businesses and how you don't need you don't need permission to conduct business in a voluntary way, right? There's no harm. There's no, as you say, um, harm, loss, or damage. So, what inspired you, or what? Let me say, what research have you done into this? Because it sounds like um, you understand some lawful, natural. Um, truths and um, someone isn't born this way as you know the government schools um, were designed to create obedient workers and soldiers and consumers and that's been going on for a hundred years so we've been so dumbed down for a few generations but what's the research that got you started and uh, gave you the courage to get out there and actually put your beliefs to the test in the real world I think that there's um Again, I think there's a lot of commonalities when it comes to the quote unquote truth movement. Again, another label and a ridiculous label because why wouldn't you wanna move on truth? But um, I think that there's certain, 
alleys we all go down. You know, I think everybody at some point comes across InfoWars, sees some value there, maybe disagrees, moves on. But ultimately where I'm at now, and I would like to, if I was to point other people towards certain people direction, uh, it would be Mark Passio, you know, as far as the idea of um, a constructive presentation on natural law and, uh, you know, rights. And more importantly, what people don't have the right to do, because a lot of the misunderstanding here is what people have a right to do and what they don't have a right to do. You know, we need to know both aspects. Carl Lentz is a big one when it comes to the common law aspect. Uh, L-E-N-T-Z. He kind of, you know, I think I'm pretty sure he's a East Coast guy, uh, kind of talks like me, kind of just dumbs it down and uh, takes it back to base principles. You know, like how your mother and father would have raised you back in the old days, as they say, you know, just common sense. Yeah. Um, Larkin Rose would be another name that I guess I could throw out there who I've seen sporadically. I know he has some good stuff. Uh, I don't go as deep into his material, but yeah, I mean, really, like you said, at a certain point, everybody gets inspired. It could be by anybody around us because really we just need the permission and the freedom to know who and what we are and what we can do, you know, and a lot of times we derive who we are by looking at other people, but then you make the shift and you say, well, this is no longer about looking at other people and seeing what they're doing in their work. This is about understanding we are all oneness. We all live in the same truth. So now I have to do my part, you know, and there's no difference between anybody who does this stuff and stands on this truth and anybody else other than the will to do it. Everybody feels fear, but we go beyond that fear because that's what defines, right, by definition, it's not about ego, bravery and cowardice. A coward feels fear and abandons his principle. A brave man feels the fear, does what's right anyway. Because again, if we can, now we can go into all the things scripture, my kingdom is not of this world. I do not live for these five cents, 3D manifestations who come before me to tell me who and what I am and what I should do. You know, my conscience, Right. And we can even go back to, to get a little goofy. Jiminy Cricket told everybody, let your conscience be your guide. You know, and there's all these different metaphors and allegories that we've grown up on, never seeing or understanding the hidden world that's being communicated to us. Right. Yeah. Beautifully well said. All those guys have uh, impacted me in some ways. I haven't heard of Carl Lentz, but uh, definitely uh, Mark Passio, Larkin Rose. Um, and in my situation, I'm actually sitting in my car right now. Some of like this sticker right here is a notice. And I got a, a dash cam over here. I got from freedomfromgovernment.org. Let's see if the internet's there. Okay. Um, and I don't have any affiliate uh, link with him or anything, but um, I got a dash cam, the books and learn. You got to start learning out there, audience members. You know, you guys are freedom lovers. So you understand what's happening. And so I want to ask you because it's taken a lot of courage for me. And the last couple of years, I've gotten tickets and it was basically a fix it ticket, right? They say, where's your license plate? And I say, well, um, I make up some excuse, right? And so now as I'm learning more, standing on truth and righteousness and, and morality um, and learning from a bunch of people, including yourself out there. And I mentioned Trent and other people exercising your rights because if we don't exercise it, they go away. You lose it or you lose it. And so it's really important that you guys out there understand that Paul's a courageous guy, but so are you. You're a courageous guy or gal out there as well. You know, it takes courage to be a human, to, to uh, deal with life and growth and things as a child and things as teens and adults. It's not going to get easy, any easier, right? We're dealing with the cycle of life and the mortality of these beings, whether you believe in the infinite soul or not, um, that's up to you. You know, I think there is something magical happening with us in these bodies. And this is my temple and this is a great awakening. So whether you believe in creation or evolution, that's, that's you know, your choice, but there's something special about you, man and woman out there and child that they have been hiding from us for so long because as we step into our power as Paul has, and as I am and other people out there, they can't stop us, you know, they outnumber us. And that's a, the great quote is we're not, out, we're not outnumbered, we're out organized. And so as we use this media to share these solutions, uh, Paul, what is your message to people out there who maybe like us, we study for a little while and we feel afraid and then we finally pull the trigger. Somebody out there who it knows that they're a traveler and not a driver, they understand it, they've saw the code. 
But still, that programming from the authoritarian school is there. The authority, see the red lights and all of us, you know, we get nervous. What's the message to people who want to overcome their fear? They want to overcome the, the cowardice that's inside of all of us. And, you know, you have done that. So what, you, what do you want to tell people who are sitting on the fence and they want to do what you're doing, but they just haven't got uh, increased the, the, the bravery inside themselves to do that? What's your message? <clears throat> well, <laughs> This goes so deep because I could tie a lot of our sociological, I guess you could call them dysfunctions, a lot of the anxiety, depression, drug abuse, escapism, entertainment, addictions. I could, I could make the case and tie it all to an itch that we are not scratching, which is to be truly free and to truly express ourselves. No man or woman can ever like himself, have high self-esteem, enjoy and be fulfilled in his life. If he is carrying out, he or she is carrying out someone else's purpose, you know, so but to, to go to the other level, right, of what would I say, you know, how much is it worth to you? I mean, a lot of us have gone to jail before. You know, we've done months in jail because at one time in our life, we struggled with drugs and addiction. And we went to jail for hurting ourselves, you know. So I asked to somebody who maybe has beaten that stuff or gotten past it or learned how to control themselves through the ups and downs in life. What is your freedom worth to you? What is the truth? worth to you? What is liking yourself and feeling good about yourself and your life story worth to you? Are you willing to spend three to 500? A lot of us spend hundred dollars on sneakers and clothes and stuff that, you know, is transitory. It's going away. It's here for an image. You know, truth is eternal. It's real. We all can come to know it and understand it and feel it in our being. So what is it worth to you? You know, I mean, I would think, and again, not to say that these people can't come upon you, misunderstand you, and you may have to give up your body and your life. And that's something that a lot of people can't square with. And I still struggle with at times is that for anything great that we really care about, and again, back to the spiritual realm, you know, the non-physical, if we want to be secure in this physical, we have to live from the perspective of the non-physical. You know, if we want to hold on to our body and property, we have to be willing to give it all up for what's true and what's right. That's the paradox here, you know, and that's, there's just, you know, to me, that's just spiritual wisdom. You can't have any of the things in this dimension that we enjoy and want if you don't secure your needs because they're foundational, you know? So again, I would say to people, if you're okay with living the rest of your life, never knowing who you really are or exerting or ex, because you could know, but you have to then go to the next level and, and, and implement it, you know? Do you ever want to see what it feels like to have that moment where, the whole illusion falls away and you now have your power back and you can feel that, you know, and now you know who you really are and what you're here to do. And more importantly, what other people are not here to do and what you're not going to allow them. To do. Yep. That's right. How much is your freedom worth? My friends, millions of people I could say have died fight for freedom. And what's so exciting about Larkin Rose's message and Lysander Spooner is that they're coming from a self-ownership perspective and a contractual perspective, which is I am born free and I'm not bound unless I, I contract with you. So do you identify as many of the people here on the show as like a voluntarist or anarchist or maybe even a libertarian, um, but someone who, I mean, you sound like a very spiritual and uh, well-read and, and wise gentleman, um, how do you identify yourself and what do you, um, you know, think about in terms of, you know, regarding labels um, in, in terms of identity? I think that there's, they're all kind of tools, you know, words in a sense, obviously they have meaning and that's why we use them. But as far as labels and identification, like I told the officer, you know, and like I would tell anybody who and what I am, as far as my perception tells me is beyond even this body and what we do in this world, whoever, whatever inhabits you know a lot of people refer to it different ways uh consciousness the Tao, um the certain state of consciousness allows me to understand that they're all just tools you know so do we do do i use voluntarism of course you know what, what other kind of ism would i use in the world other than freedom of choice between different conscious individuals which is my understanding of voluntarism so i'm sure other people We'll go ahead and label me a lot of 
different things as they typically do, anarchists, voluntarists, agorists, whatever the thing is. I mean, again, I'm for true freedom um, based in universal natural law, which is located inside or outside of us or both in conscience. The ability to use logic, morals, and ethics to come to an understanding of how to conduct oneself in the world for a desirable outcome for the self and the collective. So whatever that's defined as, I'm not too sure, you know, but I'm very reticent to put any labels or um, identification on who and what I am, you know, rather I would describe what I do. Yeah. And is that what you say, what you do? Yeah, yeah. What I do, you know, kind of like the uh, one of the movies, I forget, I think it was Bane. So who I am. You know, or <laughs> what I am is not important. It's what I come to do, you know? So we use, we use systems, situations, and circumstances, but is it who we really are, you know, at the end of the day? And I can, I can go off, you know, maybe I'm getting a little out there now. No, but like I welcome, said, man. No, I'd love I don't to hear. identify. I'm just yeah, a man. Just a man. Um, Great. And what is it that you do? If I, if I miss that here, you kind of cut out. What is it that you what do? What do you mean, uh, like occupation-wise? Yeah, well, I mean, I haven't seen that clip about Bane, but <laughs> I, I came to I came to Earth to, to increase and expand freedom. They have a great life, you know, as best as I can. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're you know saying, saying, like, yeah, what, you're saying, what did you come here to do? Those. Yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely, yeah. To to experience this dimension, in order to come to know what is unchanging, which to me seems to be truth, and we go back to scriptures you know not to be religious but the understanding of consciousness that um this is an eternal truth right i am the same yesterday as i am today as i will be tomorrow doesn't mean i don't learn more game more but the substance of the human experience and what i believe the clear purpose is is unchanging i mean this is from the beginning the whole story of human history and the struggle is about liberating oneself from one's own bondage, right? Different addictions, uh, five cents, um, you know, uh, what we call nature, but different vices, right? Like we're, we're literally here in consciousness, taking on a body to free ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and the bondage imposed by others. So that's all I'm here to do, you know? And I'm constantly, uh, you know, I, I want it to be clear to everybody watching that everybody you see who does this work, quote unquote, has a story, has has had dark times, you know, has probably not wanted to live many times. You know, these are not perfect people who come out of the womb completed by any means. There's struggle, there's darkness, there's confusion, there's fear. But what remains constant through all that is a sense of something is wrong here and needs to change. What am I going to do to to correct that? You know, as I guess Gandhi, you know, to be cliche, be the change you want to see. People don't use these phrases and understandings because they sound cute or feel good. This is law of this dimension. If you want something to get better and to be better, there's only one thing that you can do is be the best version of how that change is going to come about that you can be. Absolutely. Yep. 100% my friends and that's one of my favorite songs the man in the mirror you know and this is what the um one of the stoic tenets you know what can i control versus what's out of my control and so it sounds like you stepped in your personal power paul and um before we the battery cuts off here because we had some tech difficulties um where can people find out about you you mentioned some uh, places where they can find you where can they connect with you online and, and stay in touch with some of the good work and um the great things that you're doing out there well, right now, Dave, because just like everyone else out there, I'm a work in progress and I'm realizing more and more every day what I need to be doing and the steps I need to be taking or have always realized, but, you know, was too lazy or didn't have the will to do the work. So I've just created a YouTube channel. I probably don't even know the name or the link of it. I have a Facebook. So what we can do is, if it's possible, is I can give you the, the YouTube and the yep. Facebook and we can put it at the bottom of this video or somewhere in the link. Perfect. And if people want to go there, you know, we can do it that way. 
Perfect. Yes. And I should invite you to the uh, Colorado Volunteers Group. Um, there's a Denver Volunteers Group. There's a Florida. There's a Pennsylvania, Idaho. I'll put those links below, my friends, because I'm in Santa Cruz. We started a group a couple of years ago and start, we started doing civil disobedience, not asking permission to be free, but exercising our freedom. And so I think um, the stuff you're doing out there, Paul, so respectable and, and we admired out here. I'm gonna. We're doing a bonfire tonight, our 35th Saturday in a row, illegally bonfire, you know. And um, and I'm gonna mention this conversation and and share all the great. But lawfully, that Dave. Lawfully. Yes, that's right. Lawful bonfires, correct. <laughs> right, because it's all language, you know. And so maybe we can bring you on again and uh, discuss contracts and common law and whatever else you're up to. But uh, I'm so grateful that uh, you did what you did and somebody posted it on my wall. So if whoever posted that, thank you for sharing that because I wouldn't have seen it. Um, and I, sh I shared the photo of, um, of my back of my car with you. And so it's about educating people and being nonviolent, but then how much is freedom worth to you guys out there, man and, and ladies? Um, because it seems like it's worth everything. So this is why we have the show. And we have great guests like Paul and some of the people um, in the future. So uh, thank you, Paul. We'll put your links below. You can connect with him online and su support and encourage him, uh, whatever he's doing. And uh, thanks for joining us today on the Freedom Lovers Show. We're building a voluntary world, one relationship at a time, one conversation, one encounter at a time. And we all are one. I'm grateful that you said that because it is this beautiful consciousness that's living inside of us. And there's a human family. And we've been under attack for so many uh, generations, but we're awakening to the truth and standing up and doing what's right, doing the best that we can, become the best versions of ourselves. So thanks for helping us build a voluntary world, and we'll see you next time on the Freedom Lover Show.